Okay. Hattie, this is our springs and boxes problem walkthrough. In this problem, we are given two boxes that are on the table. There is a blue box that is compressing a spring and a red box that is just sitting on the table. On the opposite side of the compressed spring, there is another uh, spring that is not compressed. The blue box begins moving towards the red box across the surface until they collide. And then both of the boxes move together towards the uncompressed spring until they collide with the spring. In this problem, we want to determine the maximum distance the second spring compresses. Relevant quantities in this problem would be MB for the blue box, MR for the red box, KSP for the spring constants, XI for the initial compression, and XF for the final compression. We make a couple of assumptions for this problem, such as there is no friction between the blocks and the surface. There is no air resistance in the system. The system consists of the two boxes, two springs, and the surface. Energy is conserved in the system. Momentum is conserved in the system. And both springs are ideal. They have the same shape, uh, length, size, and they have the same K value. We also have a physical diagram that represents how our boxes are moving in the system. And we also have our momentum diagram showing how the momentum changes throughout the system. The next step was to do some calculations to see if we could determine whether, uh, what the maximum displacement of the second spring was. Before we started, we first decided to identify some relevant principles that could be useful to helping solve the problem. The first uh, principle we discussed was the conservation of momentum. Um, since um, momentum is conserved in a system that doesn't lose mass or have an external force on acting on it, we were able to determine that throughout the collision, even though it's inelastic, momentum is conserved since there is no outside forces when one considers a system consisting of both the blocks. Um, since momentum is conserved, the initial momentum of the two block system is equal to the final momentum of the two block system. Um, the next um, principle we decided to focus on was conservation of energy. Um, energy is conserved in a system that doesn't experience a net external force or work um, since there is no um, all uh, energy transfers are internal, the energy is conserved. To start with the spring, start with the spring potential energy is transferred fully into kinetic energy um, of the second block when the block um, then energy is not conserved, however, when the block hits the second block as it is an inelastic collision and energy is lost to other types such as thermal and sound. Um, however, kinetic energy is once again conserved fully into spring potential when the block systems hit the uh, second spring, resulting in a full transfer from kinetic energy to spring potential, which gives us our compression of the spring. Um, we then decided to find the unknown symbolically first. To start with, we started with identifying U spring is equal to the kinetic energy of block B. Um, setting this equal, we use one half K um, times um, the compression squared is equal to one half the mass of the block times its going initial velocity squared. Um, solving for this, we solve for initial velocity. Then we use the conservation of momentum principles to find that the um, momentum of the initial is going to be equal to momentum final, solving for momentum initial. Since we know the second block isn't moving, its momentum is going to be zero since mass times velocity is zero. Then we set multiply the second box's mass by the previously calculated velocity pre-collision. Um, Solving this for the final momentum, we found that since the initial has to equal the final momentum, that we could take the initial momentum and divide it by the total mass of the noose of both blocks combined to solve for velocity final. Um, 
knowing velocity final, we could then calculate the kinetic energy of the two block system, which we can use to uh, solve for the potential spring energy, setting them equal to each other since energy is cons mechanical energy is conserved. Um, Knowing that now spring potential energy, we can solve for the final displacement of the second spring, which was our goal. The final displacement of the second spring, we calculated out to be the square root of the mass of the blue block times the initial compression of the first spring squared over the all over the mass of the first block times the mass of the second block or plus added to the mass of the second block. Um, then we decided to plug in numbers into our equation to see if we could receive a reasonable numerical value. Uh, to do this, we made some assumptions that the initial compression of the first spring was 0.1 meters. The mass of the red block was one kilogram. The mass of the blue block would be two kilograms and the spring constant would have a constant value of 10 Newton meters. Um, Solving this and plugging these numbers into the equation, we come out to an answer of final compression of 0 0.082 meters. All right, now for some sense making. <clears throat> First, we can check to see if the units are correct. Because we are calculating the final displacement of the second spring, we expect displacement to be in meters. Looking at our, our equation, and plugging in units, we can see that we have the square root of kilograms times meter squared over kilograms. This simplifies out to the final position, the final displacement, the second spring is equal to meters, which is what we expect. And we can check if our numerical answer is reasonable for the problem. Our final maximum compression of 0 0.082 meters is smaller than our initial compression of 0.1 meter. This makes sense since the mechanical since mechanical energy is lost in the inelastic collision between the blocks. So the final compression of the second spring will be smaller since the spring potential energy is directly related to the energy transferred from the blocks after the collision. With more mass colliding, the second spring, but momentum being conserved throughout the system, the two boxes, m sub b plus m sub r, will have a smaller velocity than the single box, m sub b. Because velocity has a larger impact on kinetic energy than mass, due to velocity being squared in the kinetic energy equation, although the mass of the two boxes is larger than the mass of the one box, they are moving slower and therefore have less kinetic energy. When they collide with the spring and convert their kinetic energy to spring potential energy, they will have less kinetic energy than the original box, so they will compress the second spring less. Now we can look at some special cases to see if our symbolic answer makes sense. Our first special case is setting the mass of the red block equal to zero kilograms. In this situation, there would be no inelastic collision between the boxes, so the kinetic energy transferred from the springs to the blue box would be conserved throughout the system and fully transferred into the spring on the right side of the table. So kinetic energy would be fully transformed into spring potential energy in the second spring. We can see in our equation below that solving this way shows that the final displacement of the second spring is equal to the initial displacement of the first spring. Our second special case would be setting the mass of the blue, blue box equal to zero. In this situation, there would be no energy transfer from the spring to the blue box, and therefore no collision with the red box. So it would never move, it would never collide with the second spring. Since no force is exerted on the second spring, we would experience no compression from equilibrium. Now our function below shows what happens when you plug in MB equals zero. We see that there is no displacement of the spring. For comparisons now. A uh, comparison that we can make with this problem is a similar problem that we saw in physics lecture, uh, specifically lecture 18, conservation of momentum. One of these problems in lecture had us analyze the relationship between two rocks on a frictionless table. A small rock is moving to the right and hits another rock that is at rest. Similar to the spring and boxes problem, we determined if momentum was conserved 
when the box hit the other as it moved to the right, which in this case, it was. Although this problem from class does not include springs from the start and end, it does highlight the collision of the two objects. Another comparison we could make would be Tuesday's lecture. We discussed what would happen as two balls, one on top of the other, were dropped and they collided with the ground. We saw that the bottom ball stopped moving and because of the relatively elastic collision, momentum was conserved, which imparted the momentum downward into the earth. And because momentum was maintained and the, the small ball shot upwards with great velocity. That said, since earth's change in momentum is difficult to quantify, we ended up solving this problem using just conservation of energy, transferring from U sub G to kinetic energy, not unlike this problem where we transferred U sub S to kinetic energy, with the obvious difference between being spring versus gravitational potential. <laughs>